Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade repair video for you today. You're not going to believe what we are working on. I've been wanting to work on one of these again for a while now, just to try my skills out. This is Atari's pole position. We usually don't work on these because they all broke. <laughs> And it's kind of tough to fix them. They have several different processors. They have tons of custom chips. And they have battery damage. Um, they have power supply issues. It's hard to get them going. We've had some going in the past. But they're not super reliable. Sometimes even moving them across the room, the thing won't work when it gets across the room. Which is power supply part things. You. Um, but we got this one in. Um, Joe, what was wrong with it? It broke. It's broke. And so we bought, we bought this one in from off of a guy and it's broke. So we're going to uh, we're going to try to fix it. So we're going to have to test the power supplies in the game and see if, now the guy we got these from, he's a good guy by the way. So if he's watching, we're not uh, saying anything bad about him. He's the man and he knows it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we got this off a guy we know and we're going to try to we're going to try to fix it up. Um, so in the past, like I said, we've shied away from these just because we didn't have the skill to really fix them. But I think we've gotten a little better over time, so maybe we can fix them now. We're going to see. It's a shame, too. Pole Position was one of the most popular games. It's a great game, but it's kind of complex, so um, it has a lot going on. And the design wasn't that great. You know, I hate to say something bad about Atari, but it's just the truth. This is one of the worst designed major titles that they made. There's a gentleman working on a replacement board set for pole position, but he's been working on it for like 12 years. And it's just, it's super complex, and he doesn't have a bunch of time to spend on it. He's almost done with it. He's got a prototype even. But um, we just can't wait too much longer on it, so we're going to try to fix the boards ourselves. We did have a guy that was repairing the boards for us, but the gentleman passed away. So uh, now it's up to me. <laughs> um, so we'll see what we can do. I, did he, did he say that he thought the board set was good? Yeah, I think so. so it, we think the board set may be fine, but we'll see. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to check out is it has these. I'll just show you the problems that you run into with it. The power was a big problem. The edge connectors would burn up, which was a, just an, a typical Atari thing. That always happened on the Atari games. Uh, pole position, since it's a two-board set, it just uses more juice and it... It has two power supplies and two game boards, which causes issues. Okay. Uh, people have worked on these for a while, and one of the things that they figured out is that some of the routing of the power rails leaves problems. So, for instance, this is a ground test point that's on this ground rail that goes all the way around the edge. But some of these chips in the middle don't get... Uh, have issues, right? So if you look, there is a ground rail here that's also a test point, and it's just on this short little ground rail that doesn't make it all the way to the edge. So it has, I don't even know what it's using. Whoa, I don't even know what it's using to, uh, maybe it's that trace. I don't even know how it's routing ground to the edge, but. So what people have figured out is that if you tie some of these test points together, it helps you better with your voltage distribution on the board. So that's an issue. Okay. Another issue is there's all these custom chips, and they all have tin legs. So uh, T-I-N, tinned legs. Um, so they get oxidized. I guess that's the silver on it or the tin on it or something. I don't know. So you got to clean those. And then sometimes some of the custom chips die. But we're to the point now where I think you can get replacements for just about all the custom chips brand new if you have to. If you can figure out which custom chips messed up. So this, is, this game, it seems real simple, but it's not. It's really complex. You, you've got lots of 3D movement going on in the game, at which they hadn't done a ton of whenever this came out. This was, what, 82, I think? 1982? Um, so you've got a lot of 3D movement going on in the background that it has to keep track of everything. You've got a lot of scaling that's going on. Um, you, you've got tons of sprites and different different things. Uh, it even has speech on it, which is just, I guess, uh, I guess just uh, 
recordings of speech or whatever. It's not, I don't think it's super complex, but you know, it does talk <laughs> for 1982. Uh, you know, it's super complex. So this is just one of the boards. There's another one too, with just as much stuff on it. So you got that issue where the customs go bad and they're also, um, they need to be cleaned. Okay. And then they put a battery on the board. So there was a, originally a battery mounted here and I want to show you something. See this little jumper? See how it says off? And then there's one that says on. Okay. These were shipped from the factory with the battery turned off. And most people never turned it on. The battery's sole function was to do bookkeeping stuff and to save the uh, settings and, and things like that. Or the high scores, I believe. Uh, but you didn't need it. The game would run without it. And whenever it shipped, they were turned off. So they put a battery on the board that has leaked over the years and just damaged all kinds of stuff. That most people didn't even use. So it, it this isn't the end of the world. We can fix all this. This one's not even that bad. But a lot of times you'll get it where it is spread, you know, and mess this chip up too. But this one isn't isn't the worst in the world. With this, with this alkaline, though, whenever it spreads, if you look at what's going on, see how it got into the ground trace? And then see how it's f fine or kind of fine? And then you get down here, and it's popping up again down here. That corrosion will travel through every little freaking thing. It'll even travel through wires. Sometimes, like, the end of the wire will be all corroded. You can cut the wire in half, and it looks fine in the middle. But on this end, it's corroded, too, because it traveled through the freaking wire. Weird as crap. I don't know how that's possible. But that's what's going on. So we got uh, battery damage to take care of. We got to clean all these chips. Uh, we might have to add some more of these. We have to fix the edge connector. And then a lot of times another thing that people will do is whenever they put these in the game, instead of just relying on the edge connector for the power, you can put extra wires on the, on the harness so that you can jumper uh, like the 5 volt to this 5 volt spade. And then now you've got two connections. Or is that a 5 volt? That's probably... Um, boop, boop, boop. I don't know which one's the 5. That's not the 5. That's the ground. And those are all grounds. So be a, one of these will probably be a 5. So you can then you've got two 5 volt connections. Right? So we, we'll probably do that too. Maybe an extra connector for the 5 and an extra connector for the ground. I'm going to look online too and see what people suggest about these jumpers. If there's some other ones that aren't, aren't installed on this yet that would uh, help out. But I want to make it where it's completely removable from the cabinet. I don't like whenever people just solder stuff to the, the game and it can't come out. So this is the other board. Um, I believe this is the video board. Yeah. So the two connect together with this end connector. Okay. And uh, I don't know if it has its own separate power that comes in here or if they route it all through the end connector. We can look on the schematics and figure that out. But on this board, uh, you've got custom chips again. You've got 2016 RAM, but they're socketed, so that's cool. Um, and then up here, these are just ROMs. Uh, but you don't have the battery damage problem. All right? So uh, this this board maybe won't give us quite as many problems, but we'll we'll look into the the jumpers that uh, our buddy was trying to do. Looks like he was tying that ground to this ground. I don't know that that would help much. Look, so that ground is on the edge basically, and then this one is just the next rail over. You know, it's already kind of connected there, so you don't necessarily have to tie those together. I don't think. And then this one has broken loose from something. Maybe it was over here originally. Um, but again, you know, if you're connecting from there to there, that's already got a pretty nice trace. I don't really think that helps much. They're trying to get the ground the same all over the board so that it's just a little more reliable. But it, on, a, on the video board, it appears to me that the ground rails run really well from one side to the other. So... Um, yeah, so you got a ground rail here that runs all the way out. Got a ground rail here um, that runs over to here as well. Um, 
you got a ground rail here that runs all the way down to here. Ground rail here that does these. Uh, ground rail here, out to here. And one there, out to here. One there, all the way across. One there, all the way across. One there, to here, and one from here to here. It looks to me like the grounds on this board are probably going to be fine on the video board because they they have nice there's no weird vias and stuff it, it, everything's from the edge see like this one so this is a nice healthy ground right and then it runs out and hits the chips as it goes all the way across to another nice healthy ground on that side so I don't think that has to be touched up. If you've got a good ground connection on this plane, you're good. You might want a couple jumpers, maybe one jumper, um, just to make sure you're, everything's cool. But hmm, Let's see this. Okay, so ground over here. You can see the ground coming in on the edge connector there. That's the one that runs from the other side. And you can see, oh no, I'm sorry, this is the one running from the other side. All right, see all the different connections for the ground? These old things. And on this end, it's getting it from here. But again, if you look, there's several ground connections. Those are probably outputs to controls or something. Uh, but we need to repair the edge connectors and then also probably put jumper connections on it for the, the uh, test spades. Um, but since ground is over there, and we have ground over here, it looks like maybe it connects under the board from there to there. Yeah. So, you know, that's a nice, healthy connection, man. I don't think that's really that big of a problem. Uh, and look, they also have it tied together on the bottom, running down, and you can see that it's, see see how the, the ground is connecting to that pin and then on the top that pin is also connected to this ground this is all tied together pretty good at least on this board so um, I think the problem is probably the CPU board and not so much the video board alright so we'll clean some of this up a little bit and I'll uh, start putting uh, these connecting repairing these connections uh, and we'll clean some chips and we'll start working through it all Okay, so I put the uh, spade back on that I pulled out and got it soldered on well. I cleaned the legs on every chip that's socketed. And that's just kind of a common thing to everything, but we'll go ahead and do it on this one too. Um, I left this jumper that they had. I think that's a good idea, but I kind of think it's overkill um, because of what we were seeing. There's a good ground all the way around. All of the chips are connected to that same ground plane pretty well, and there's not really any screwed up spots. And then this one spot where it jogs from here to here, on the back they actually have rails going the other way to all of the chips as well. So it's all, you know, like this chip is connected to ground here, and it's also connected to ground here. So, which, and it's also connected to ground here, and it's all tied together really well. So I don't, I don't think that these, the jumpers in the middle are even necessary. Um, it may make it a little better. But once we have two points of ground connection on the edge, like once we have one on the on the edge connector, and then we're also going to do the, the little jump wire to here, and then the same with the five. Once you have two connections of the five, it should and, and the ground, it should be fine. Um, I've got these working before too uh, by just getting the connector really nice and not even having the little jumpers. But I do think the jumpers are a good idea. All right, and then I repaired the. That last pin, we use this little copper tape that you can put on it and then you can solder the end of it. And since they usually wrap all the way around, it's really easy to just solder this end and then solder the end on the other side as well. All right, this one here, someone else had already done. So uh, I think this board's as good as we can get it uh, without actually testing it in the game. So um, um, we'll, we'll do the CPU board next. Okay, so here's the CPU board. First step, I cleaned all the chips. Wow, look at all that. And by the way, we've been using this thing. Look at this. 
It's a chip lifter. Somebody mailed us. One of our good friends mailed us this. This is made by the good people in Germany. Boy, they make they make cool stuff in Germany. Look what they did. They took a screwdriver and bent it. It's just a bent screwdriver. It works perfect to lift, lift chips, just like it says. Chip lifter. Go get you one of these. We may have one of these linked on our website. If you go to our website, there's a parts page. Go to lionsarcade.com. There's a parts page where we have a bunch of stuff that we use in our repairs uh, linked on there. And uh, if you click those links, it takes you to Amazon. If you buy anything after you click that link and go to Amazon, it keeps track that we sent you there. And it gives us a tip. So thank you everybody that's been doing that. But you might want to uh, spice up your life and get you a chip lifter. Look at that. What an awesome little tool. And look, the end moves. So you get good twisting action. <laughs> Love it. So I, I pulled out the, the chips, and I, I use a file. It's the same file we use on our pinball machines. Really light abrasion. You don't want to go crazy, but we clean them up a little bit and get them nice and shiny. Okay, see how you can see the shine from here, can't you? So we've done those first. Everything looked cool. None of the legs were bent over. I honestly believe none of those chips had ever been out of those sockets. So next up, I'm going to fix the edge connector. So on this one we have three burnt pins, but if you look they're connected together. So you don't have to be super careful about not connecting them together up here because these are definitely connected together. And then this one is separate so you can't connect it. Um, so let me uh, let me see what I can do about that. As far as the ground stuff, we have the same thing going on here. So let's go over to ground traces. Look, for so for this row of chips, starts up here, goes all the way across to the other side. So I mean, what is a jumper really doing? I don't. I just don't think that's helping much. Same thing here. Every row is like that. And then if you look on the end, see the little. This is the five volt actually. See the little vias, right? Um, see the vias here? Okay. So on the back, see there's the vias. So that is not the only way, like this is a good example, that is not the only way these chips are getting ground. Right? Because it's also connecting to the one that's running on the top. These are all connected together in a grid. So... I don't really see the problem. I don't think that's it. I think the problem is all in the edge connector. I think all these jumper wires don't, aren't doing a damn thing. That's my opinion. Um, and like I said, I've had a few that I've fixed in the past with just the jumpers onto the board and they were fine. And I've even done some without the jumpers on the board and they were fine. And originally they didn't have any jumpers on the board. I'll tell you another thing though. We did those damn sense mods. I think that's a big deal. Now, I know a lot of people don't like doing that, and I wouldn't say that you necessarily want to do it on every game, but if you don't do the sense mod, that's why crap like this happens, man. It's the current running through it on that sense line. It's not on the actual ground line. It's on the sense line that gives you the problem. So I, I just think the sense mod is a good idea on pole position. That's my opinion. I understand about half of you will think the other way. Uh, so with those sense mods, I think we're going to be cool. So let me do the let me do the copper on the three burnt pins there. We'll clean that up a little bit, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do about the corrosion. <laughs> so this is what we ended up with. Some of these you can wrap around, some you can't. So this particular one I could wrap around with the tape. And so you can solder it on one side and then solder it on the other side, on the back. But this one you can't. It's actually two different traces. If you look... You get this trace here, but then whenever you flip it over to the back, it's actually a different pin. You know, so this is a two sided connector. So some of them you can wrap the tape around because they're connected anyway. This particular one you can't. So I, I, what I did was I just stiffened it up with some more solder. It wasn't completely gone. Hopefully that'll keep it uh, where whenever we slide the edge connector on, it'll get a nice solid contact and then we're also going to have the jumpers so uh, we'll see so that's that I think we're good there we got the chips clean I think that's good so now we need to do this corrosion 
We do this on our pinball machines all the time. Basically what we need to do is clean this up the best we can. You can actually just use a wire brush. People tell me, oh, use a, uh, use a fiberglass brush. So let's try that. Just to, let me show you that that ain't gonna work. <laughs> Maybe it will, I hope it does. Basically, this stuff's way, there's, there's way too much going on here for a fiberglass brush to handle. So let's like look at this, okay? So we'll hit it with the fiberglass brush. You're not breathing it, are you? Boy, we did go through it, didn't we? Might have went too far to it through. <laughs> Hmm, I don't know. It may work just fine. <laughs> I think it depends on the board, maybe. But yeah, we may be able to clean this up with a fiberglass brush. We're going to try it. So basically, we're trying to get all of the old corrosion off, or as much of it as we can, and then move on to neutralizing it and repairing it but I'd like to see if this I think we're just tearing tin away once we get down that far I think we've lost that right is that just discolored or is it gone I think it's gone yeah so I think we've we've cut right through the copper so in an instance like this, yeah, you are going to need jumper wires. So we may end up putting more jumper wires. We may have to go from here over to here or something. You know, I mean, it goes around the other way too, but part of the benefit of it is that it goes both ways, you know. So like if this disconnects, well, now this chip gets its ground from all the way over here or whatever. It's not as ideal. But that's what we're looking at. Okay, so I'm going to use the fiberglass brush. And maybe something even more aggressive. We'll see. And try to clean this up as best I can. And then we'll see if we can get these clean enough. This this one here is suspect. See if we can get them clean enough to leave in or if we're going to have to pop those chips and put new ones in. And again, remember, we haven't even tested it yet. Okay, so I've got it on the trash can for the mess. And I started doing it more my way, which is let's um, get on it with a file. All right? Or sandpaper. And so what was going on was that the... the uh, fiberglass brush it does work but it's not strong enough I mean so that stuff that we were seeing was not the copper all the way gone it was just corrosion the fiberglass brush uh, wasn't thick enough to take off okay so sometimes you got to get on it people but we had a couple videos and people go oh my god I can't believe you're using a file you're using sandpaper look people the shit is intense okay that's, that's how it is alright we're going to make it happen a brush ain't going to do it. That ain't going to get it off of there. This is a fiberglass brush. It's good for a lot of things, but it's whenever it's this strong, uh-uh. You need a damn file. You need to get on it. <laughs> right? So like this crap here. Like, look at that. That's all the brush would do. Right? That ain't good enough. Let's scratch that shit off, man. We got to get this... You gotta be careful of your traces. You don't wanna damage anything worse than it already is, but it's already pretty damn damaged, right? We gotta get all that crap off of there. It'll just keep eating if we don't. I will tell you though, that a Dremel is too much. You hit it with a Dremel, it's just gonna go right through the damn thing. So we got to get this copper exposed. I've also had people say, well, once you expose the copper, You've got to put a coating on it. I throw the flag on that one too. Yeah, it would be great if you could put a coating on it. But, like, I can't put a coating under chips and stuff, you know? I mean, it's just, it is what it is. 
crap's in rough shape, man. We got to clean this stuff up. So that's, this is the kind of crap we're working on. Right? So I'm going to keep at it and keep at it and clean it as best I can. But like, see, like, say there's something there. That's got to go. If that stays, that will just continue to spread. You got to get it as good as you can. So like on this, I would use something like a really light sandpaper or something to clean that up a little bit. Let's see if I can get it. Right? And when, whenever you do this, you're tearing your board all to hell, but it's already tore all to hell, people. I didn't do it. I'm just trying to fix it. I'm trying to save it. Right? So you just, you kind of need some aggressive stuff. Get this crap cleaned up. And then you get as much of it off as you can. Right. Once you get it cleaned up, best you can, uh, I'm going to pour a little, not pour, but I'm going to use a toothbrush to spread around a little vinegar on it to hopefully get down in whatever I missed and neutralize that uh, uh, that uh, base that's on there, that the alkaline that leaked out of the battery. So vinegar is an acid, it will neutralize a base, you know. That's one of those things where... It may or may not be super effective, but we're going to try it, right? <laughs> my, so my thought is there may be a little divot somewhere that we don't get the uh, we don't get the, new, the the base out of. So we put a little vinegar on it, it mixes with it and neutralizes it, and then whenever you clean it, you may not get all that out of there either. But at least you tried to do something, right? So uh, I'm gonna clean it up as best I can, and then uh, we'll we'll put the vinegar to it. This is with the vinegar on it. Let it sit for a second and then uh, rinsed it off with water. That's right, water on a PCB. Uh, when that happens, you're going to get water all under the sockets. You can even see a little bit right there, maybe. See the shininess? That's water. You know, so you got to let this thoroughly dry. Now, you can take a, a little shortcut you can take is you can pour alcohol on it rubbing alcohol or something, right? Um, and alcohol uh, absorbs water and then evaporates. So uh, alcohol will dry it a lot quicker, but whenever you do that, a lot of times it stains the board. You'll have The board will have like a lot of white stains on it. So you just have to decide if you want to do that or not. I'm in no big hurry because we still have to uh, uh, work on the cabinet a little bit some more and things like that, so I'm not uh, in a big hurry to test it. But Due to the magic of uh, online, I was going to say, due to the magic of YouTube, but you know, we're not only uploading videos on YouTube anymore. Did you know that? We can see the writing on the wall, people. This may not be the only platform for all of history, so we'll see. We're going to keep doing YouTube, but there may be other options too, right? Um, uh, so, uh, due to the magic of YouTube and other places, you won't have to wait uh, for the water to dry. <laughs> So we'll come back when the water has dried, and uh, we'll try sliding it in the game and see if we get anything. It, you know, we still might have all kinds of problems. It may have been broken other ways. We we're just trying to do the best we can to make it at least somewhat reliable. Um, and I am positive, by the way. I am positive that whenever you do yours, you'll do a much better job. I'm sure you know much better. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll put it back together and get ready to put it in the game. Okay, folks, so before we put those boards back in, we've got to work on these edge connectors a little bit. The pins themselves don't really look burnt or bad. Maybe somebody's replaced some of them. Uh, but we want to do the little jumper thing, right? So our buddy who was fixing this cut the wires. These are the ground wires. He cut those and then put a little jumper to go to the ground spade on the board. That will work, but I'm going to do it a little different. I'm actually going to leave the wires connected and put the jumper on it so that there's you, you know you're, you're getting rid of the pin connection on the edge connector that we've repaired you're getting rid of that connection which is fine but then you're you're still only sending the ground through one point of connection these do they are a little more solid and they're brand new so that would work better 
but I want it to have the ground going through all three, you know, just so it's rock steady, baby. I think I hit the heat sink. You know what I mean? Rock steady, baby. Uh, so I'm going to actually attach this back to these two wires. Um, and um, I'll see if I can figure out a cleaner way to do it than with the twist tie. We, we might be able to, this will work, but we may be able to solder that and put some heat shrink on it or something. And then that way you can plug it in and put the little jumper on it. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, it'll be great. So we're going to do one for the ground and one for the five. And then on the other board, we're also going to do one for the ground and one for the five. And then with, with those four extra connections, it should make it where the voltage is getting on the board just fine. Um, in our previous video, we checked the power supplies, as you saw. We did the sense mod on them, and one was putting out 5.07 volts, and one was putting out 5.11 volts. So we're real close, and everything's good. Um, so I'm going to touch these up a little bit, make them a little better if I can, and then uh, we'll see what we can do about... Um, uh, getting it cosmetically to look at least halfway decent. Okay, so I added the wire and heat shrunk it to everywhere. So here is the one that was cut. Put it back together with heat shrink and the ground wire. I cut the five, put it back together with heat shrink. And uh, da, 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 the five volt. And then on this one, same thing, cut the grounds, added an extra wire to the ground lug, cut the 5 volt wires, added an extra ground to the 5 volt lug. Now, it may be better, you know how you can get the insulated ones that are a spade and a, a male and a female? It may be better to do that because you're going to run into the problem that I've ran into where with the terminal connector on there, if it's sticking straight out, it's not going to go in the case properly right so I had to move them a little bit bend them out of the way a little bit but as you can see everything's cool um, but it might be better to solder a wire to the spade uh, the terminal on the, the test point and then run it out and then have a disconnect here that's a male and a female might be better um, and you would still be able to remove the board the only thing is if you remove this board and want to put another one in, you can because I've got them where they just plug right into the terminals. If you did it the other way, uh, once you took that board out, if you tried to put another one in, it wouldn't have the, the one piece that you would need. So, however you want to do it, people. It's up to you. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to leave this out just a little bit because we're going to turn it on, and who the hell knows if it's going to work but I want to be able to measure the voltage actually on the board to get it near 5. And since uh, it's suspected that there's a problem of getting the 5 all the way to every part of the board, we're actually going to elevate it a little bit. So we want it to be about, we want, we want it to be over 5 on the board, right? Maybe even 5.1, something like that. And we want both sides to be fairly similar to each other so that you don't run into problems with the floating ground or the ground being in, having different differentials. <laughs> different uh, differential, having a differential between the two boards, whatever, you know what I mean. Uh, so we want to try that. We also want to make sure that our fan's working, so we might have to replace that. Okay, so we're to the point now we're going to pop the thing on with the board plugged in. Remember, we already checked the voltages, uh, and we're just going to see if the thing comes up, or if it gives us an error code, or, or what. Okay, folks, I had to pull the board back out because when I turned it on, I started smelling something burning. And so I pulled it out and looked, and this CR2 is cooking. So we got to figure out what CR2 is. Something ain't right. So uh, let's go check that out on the schematics. It's on the video board. So here we are in the schematics. Let me show you something special. So here's the power input, 5 volt and ground, right? CR1 is the di the diode, the LED that shows you that there's 5 volts. And then look at CR2. Look what they've done here. There is a Zener diode over ground and 5 right at the beginning. That's a 5.6 volt Zener diode. So what's that mean? It means that if the 5 volts goes higher 
than 5.6 volts, this starts working, lowering it back down. <laughs> what a design! Wow! What a design. So it smoked that damn thing. It laid down its life for this pole position board. Now why would it do that? The freaking power supply must have been putting out more than 5 volts. Now you saw that we measured it and it was fine. But you also saw that it had that old freaking bottle cap on there. And remember I said, well, I'm not going to change it. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, apparently there is. Now, look at this, though. The guy we got it from had just sent these off to be repaired. So I assumed, you know what that means when you assume. I A S S U M E. I assumed that if I'm testing it, it's fine, and this guy tested it, and it's fine, that's probably fine. <clears throat> Apparently, this bottle cap is fine if you don't have a load on it, but then it dies. Now what? It's a 20, it's a 2N 6057. I don't even know. I think we might have to change it. Might have to make it something different. Uh, so apparently it works with no load. It's giving you 5 volts, but then whenever you have a load, the voltage goes up, maybe? Something like that. So we're going to swap that out. And then uh, we're also going to have to swap out that Zener diode because it's fried it. Tip of 42, it's memory. And then we'll try it all again and see if we get any different, uh, any different result the second time. Well, I don't know, folks. My schematic says it should be a 2N3055, and somebody has replaced it. That's not the original one. And they replaced it with one from 1979, but this game wasn't made till 1982, so I don't know, folks. Something ain't right. So we're going to swap it back out with a 2N3055. This may be a date code here. You know, you would expect if, it, if it's original, who knows. But if it was original, it would be... Um, it would be more 82 that it was made, so I don't know. I don't know that that 6057 would ever work right with this setup, but maybe. I'm sure one of you can figure it out. It was giving us 5 volts, just not with a load, so that could have been the whole problem. Ugh, what a mess. We're going to try it again, people. So we've got it all put back in. Keep your fingers crossed. No smoke. <laughs> 4.97, 4.98, that's not bad. Let's see about the other side. Come on, you sucker. <laughs> Come on, you sucker. Uh, I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Why are y'all always trying to get me to do stuff with one hand? I think you want to see me fry stuff. Don't slip. Don't trip. Well, hmm. Come on if I can. Five point oh three. It says. I don't know. It's four point nine eight. That's real close, people. Keep your fingers crossed. Holy crap. Let me turn off the lights. So it looks like we're in the test mode. RAM's okay, the ROM is okay. The accelerator, let's see if we can read any of that. Oop. People, the gas pedal has survived. <laughs> the gas pedal has survived all these years. Brake's gonna stay at zero because we don't have the we don't have a brake. Shift low. The shifter. Holy crap! It lives! Oh my god! 
We might have got a pole position limping along. I think if you, I think you get different sounds if you if you do that. Steering. The steering wheel is working. You know what we want to hear. Say it, woman. Say it. Doesn't. Don't they talk? I can't remember. Prepare to qualify. There we go. Prepare to qualify. All right. Uh, the battery's dying. Let me go charge the battery, and then we'll. I'll, I promise I'll leave it. See, look, it says sound 19. I'll leave it on this board, and then we'll. Uh, I'll come back and we'll try to swap it into gameplay and see if it actually works or if it's all glitched out. All right, folks, I'm back. So let's try some more sounds. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's back to the beginning. All right. Um, now, just because this screen is working doesn't mean the thing is going to work. You might think, oh, it's up and playing. No, 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 no. Like I said, the thing's really complex. Hopefully it's up and playing. But the the whenever it says RAM okay and ROM okay, it has it has the ability to check the ROMs, I believe, but it doesn't really have a, the ability to check all the RAM. Like there could easily be a lot of video problems where it doesn't look right, or uh, the entire car is not displaying on the screen, or something like that. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work, but we're about to find out. Let's swap it into gameplay and see what happens. Did I hit the wrong button? I don't know if I moved it or not. I must have done something. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, folks. I think we might still have problems. That's with the switch up. I don't remember how you actually get it in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Still got some issues, I think. Well, what was that? I'm not touching anything. Maybe George is trying to fix it for us. Oh, so close, but yet so far away. I mean, it's a cool game if you can get into the test mode, but if the game won't actually boot, it's not very fun to play. Well, there you go. Now you know why we have more than one video scheduled on these a lot of times. It's almost there. This is with the switch down. Maybe if I put the switch up and leave it. It shouldn't take anywhere near this long, though. It should be pretty much instant whenever you... Whenever you swap back and forth, and you shouldn't have to turn it off. But we'll do that just in case. Let's turn it off. We definitely got issues, people. So leave your comments below. Next time we'll have to break out the uh, we'll have to break out the logic probe and work our way through it a little bit. I think maybe that uh, maybe that corrosion's a little worse than we thought. 
we'll have to uh, we'll have to work backwards through the schematics and see where everything stops. There's a couple different processors. I don't know. I think they're both Z80s, but I don't know if one just does the music or and the other one doesn't. Um, but even if just the one that does the music was working, we shouldn't have been able to test everything in test mode. So we definitely got something going on. So we'll mess with it some more next time. Make sure to give us a thumbs up. We're not defeated, just delayed. And leave your comments below. Make sure to also check out my brother Donnie. If you don't know about that, that's our li that's literally my brother here on YouTube. Uh, if you like watching us work on these old arcade games, you'd probably okay. So that and when it's up, that is the test mode. Okay, so I'm gonna put it down. There's some kind of delayed something or the other. See, it's trying to it's trying to come up. So we're definitely out of test mode now. We'll let it sit there and see if it decides to get with us eventually. It just did the scrambled thing. So if you like watching us work on these arcade games, you probably like watching us work on old buildings. He and I have bought a couple buildings in a small town near here. Uh, in the downtown area we're trying to fix up to help revitalize downtown. So uh, go check that out if you haven't already. A great time is to be had by all. So close, people. What do you think it is? Look, it's late tonight. I can't keep working on this thing. we got to go home. At least now I have something to do tomorrow. What do you think? Maybe it'll decide to cooperate. Huh? Huh? You know, we never did set it up to 5.1 like I was talking about. <laughs> it wants to. There's a concept, you know, that these things want to work. If this thing was if this thing was built just to be a pole position, it wants to be a pole position. That's all it can really be, right? You can make it an aquarium, I guess. But in general, all it can really be is a pole position. So it wants to be a pole position real bad. It's just not animate. So we got to help it a little bit, just like the people that built it, brought it to life. We gotta we gotta save it. So uh, on the next video, we'll do just that. So we'll see you then. Have a good evening.